in honor of our very first warm day of the year. We are excited to talk today about seasons. Today on the Infinite Energy Podcast, we're diving into seasons and the cyclical nature and how they show up in your lives in more ways than the weather. Stay tuned for this great episode coming up next. Hi, we're sisters Kay and Shai, and we're the hosts of the Infinite Energy Podcast. We believe that everyone has the power to live a more energized, optimistic, and fulfilling life. In every episode, we share tips and techniques for harnessing your own power and creating the life you deserve. Get ready to ignite and discover the limitless power of Infinite Infinite Energy. They come, they go. Today is all about seasons. And of course, we were joking in the beginning about we've had our first warm day here in our community. It's starting to maybe feel like spring, although after our eighth atmospheric river. (laughs) It's all just one big river, okay? Right, it's just the winter of atmospheric (laughs) river, which is what it has felt like. But lo and behold, the sun is starting to warm up our ground. The snow piles are dissipating. The ones in our cul-de-sac are almost all the way gone. Oh, man. And they were stories high. So glad to feel the changing of the winter season moving into the spring. Although this year, I imagine it'll be a little shorter as then we get into the summertime. But here's the thing. Seasons, be they in nature and expressed in weather, are seen throughout all forms of our lives, even down into maybe our emotional seasons, our action seasons, our professional seasons, our personal seasons, and so much more. Right. And we see that things moving in cycles is absolutely something that is found pretty much <laughs> everywhere in the natural Hashtag world. theme. Right. <laughs> we have the, the moon goes through its cycles. We have the seasons go through their cycles. There's the growth cycles, biologically speaking, inside each and every one of us, right? We think about all our hearts go in a cycle of rhythm, right? In and out, up and down. So there's this rhythm underlaying everything. And once we understand that, the beauty I think for us is that as humans, we're co-creators. So yes, the seasons and the cycles are going to impact and affect you. And you can have a little bit of a say in how you weather those seasons and how long they last. So glad that you talked about the seasons being this underlying rhythm, Shy. And one of the things that makes a rhythm catchy in a song is that the rhythm plays over and over and over again. And so in order to get someone to enjoy it, to listen to it, to have it stuck in your head, right, a rhythm has to repeat. And that's exactly what these cycles do. Oftentimes in our lives, it feels like, hey, maybe we're going to stay in this horrible time of darkness forever. And that feeling of despair can often lead to an elongating of a season of despair without our intention behind it. And so when we think about utilizing the energy of seasons, because here on the Infinite Energy podcast, this is all about tapping into specific energies so that we can hopefully influence them and use them most to our advantage, which means when we harness the power of seasons, we really start to harness the power of change and dance with it versus fight against it in order to create a more beautiful dynamic symphony of life using the rhythms already at play. Right. You can let those waves beat the heck out of you or you can grab a surfboard and you can have the time of your life. Unlocking the infinite energy in yourself and in your life gives you that surfboard. And that's what we always want to do. And one of the main things that we've noticed and that we've heard some of the greats talking about is this idea of the seasons. And if we think about how we understand them and weather, they really are reflected in in our own lives in a lot of different ways from our physical health, right? There's seasons of our health in in not just physical, but also mental, right? Like uh, we've often talked about the fact that sometimes you catch a cold in your mental health, right? You'll have a, a, maybe a depressive few weeks. And so that's a cold, that's a season in your mental health. Now there's things that you can do that will elongate that season as we've alluded to, or things that you can do to, to weather and brave that season and some things that you can do to partner with that season, but it's going to show up for us. So, so knowing that they're coming and being able to tap into that power allows us to say, what's appropriate for this season? What can I understand it based on what nature is telling me? And how can I use my own infinite energy to make it easier and go faster? 
So let's dive into the four of nature's seasons and maybe help draw some parallels for you as to how these seasons might overlap with your life. First up, there's spring. Let's start right there where we're starting in our actual weather patterns. For those of uh, of our listeners in the Southern Hemisphere, we know you're on the opposite end, but here we're in spring, so let's start there. And when we're talking about that spring from a, a personal place, we're talking about that place of new beginnings, of new things budding up, of new growth happening, of new ideas, and, and right as the farmer gets ready, springtime is is a busy time uh, for 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 cultivating our plants and for planting those seeds and deciding what's going to be in the garden. So spring's a very exciting time with a lot of new opportunities budding up. Gotta love spring and the feeling that it brings about. Now, in history, uh, ancient religions that really centered around the natural world and its cycles actually honored the springtime and the equinox, the the March equinox, as a uh, as the new year. So this was celebrated before um, the changing of the calendar. This was really celebrated as the time of the new year. And so, for those of you who maybe energetically feel like, okay, you get through this January. New Year, and there's like the push of the energy of everyone pushing together, but maybe things fizzle out really fast for you. It might be because we're trying to start New Year energy in the dead of winter. So give yourself the opportunity of maybe leaning into New Year energy right here in the spring. Take that equinox right around that March time and lean into it. Now, Shai, before we get off of spring, I'm hoping we can share with everybody what we just got to do on the spring equinox. Oh my gosh. Well, some of you know, and many of you probably not, so we'll share that we've had a solstice tradition now for a couple of years, something that we started on the winter and the summer solstice, both the longest and the shortest day of the year. We started adding in a self-care spa solstice sister soiree. <laughs> I actually added words there to make it more alliteration, but I couldn't help it. Uh, and, we, and so we, we've been having this intentional self-care time in a spa day, doing some meditating, doing some reflecting, and that's been really amazing. And well, we do year. it on the solstice because the solstice is the day where the sun and our cycle pauses before it goes back into the other direction again, right? So we've got two, two times per year, we have this switching that happens at these. And so there's a moment where there's this kind of breath of pause. And so just wanted to add in that on the solstice is we take this intentional moment of pause. It's how we like to dance with the seasons. Right. Well, and if you're with us on any of those solstice sister spa soirees, <laughs> then you'll know that things get a little weird, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to get a little deep. We on our crystal altar. Right. <laughs> but with this year, we decided let's do something to recognize and celebrate the equinox, right? And kind of get into this once a season from a natural standpoint, we want to honor that season. But equinox really being that day in between the solstice where there's equal parts night and day. And so what was something that we could do that would equal out this breath of self-care. And that's when we decided it was going to be something immersed in nature and immersing our bodies in physical activity. So we decided to get out there and get active in the spirit of spring and get in the spirit of the new beginning. So Shyla and I took a magical hike into the Redwood Forest. Our parents hosted us for spring break in Oregon at their home and it was lovely. Now the two of us went out, they all kept the kids and just Shy and I went out onto a lovely trail that led to something called the Grove of Giants. And we went on a five mile adventure through a mystical magical redwood Oregon forest helping to root us back into our energy so that we could tackle what is coming up to be our busiest month of the year. Now, April for us, which is is the timing that this podcast is being recorded, what's about to happen for us is a trip to Las Vegas one week and then a trip to Florida the following week and then a trip to Pennsylvania the following week after that all for speaking engagements, all for events that we have going, all for big energy pushes, right? And so this was almost our warm up. I felt like it was our gathering of our energy so that we could push into this next side of the season. 
right? Because a season like that where you're sweating and working hard, that's a summer season, right? That's when you're moving into, if we think about what does a farmer have to do with their crop? If we planted all the new exciting seeds and made new projects in the spring, the summer is about sweating and protecting, right? Like it is about don't let the rabbits get it. Keep the water on it. You've got to give it the intentional ingredients that those seeds need in order to produce a harvest in the fall, right? That's what we're going for. So we get to come out of this kind of lati da, right? The promise of spring. And the, um, I, I, we had a quote here. Let's see. Leo Tolsty said, spring is the time of plans and projects, right? This is that time in, in, in your life where you're planning and you're project, projecting. I'm going with that as a <laughs> verb. But if we want to just like, I don't want to complicate things for you, but think about there's all these different things in your life going on. So it's not like I'm in a winter season period. In your relationships, you have seasons. Mm. In your health, you have these seasons. In Preach, your job, yes. right? You have these seasons. So you might have, you have, you do have simultaneous seasons happening in different realms of your life. Knowing that allows you to act differently, right? I'm not going to treat every realm of my life like it's in spring. I need to know, right? On our career front, we are definitely in that sweat and protect summer mode, right? This is about the the long days, the doing the work, the keeping it protected, and doing the things that will allow us to reap that harvest in the autumn, but love kind of moving into that summer point, that energy, that abundance, that celebration, and that embracing of kind of the life and the flow and the hard work. Next up, we're going to tackle even more about summer, but first let's hear from our sponsors. Truth Talk, we're back after 31 days off social media, and this time it's been hard. It was way harder. We missed all of you. We missed scrolling. We missed all the highlights, but we're so happy to be back. We had two incredible adventures in the month of March. Now, the first one, we went out to Orlando, Florida to spend some time with our Maxwell Leadership family. 48 hours after getting home, we were on the road with all five kids, two sisters, and one car for an incredible spring break week with our parents up in Brookings, Oregon. Now, all along, we have been planning exciting events coming up here in April. We can't wait to share with you now that we are back. So be here to follow along for all things K and Chai. And we saw so many of you tuning into the Infinite Energy podcast while we were away, and we are so glad that you did. To all of you who do listen to the Infinite Energy podcast, thank you for being a loyal listener. For those of you who haven't tuned in yet, we hope you'll find us on your favorite podcast platform. And we're so glad to be back with all of you here on social media. See you soon and stay tuned. We're talking leadership this week. And one of the organizations we are so proud to be at the helm of is the Neuroencoding Institute. We got to co-found the Neuroencoding Institute alongside Dr. Joseph McClendon, the third amazing world-renowned neuropsychologist and incredible mentor and teacher. If you're at all interested in learning more about what the Neuroencoding Institute does and what it can do for you, please visit neuroencoding.com. You're enjoying this episode on Angel Phoenix Productions Podcast Network. To explore our complete lineup of quality programs and media production services, head on over to angelphoenix.com or like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Angel Phoenix Productions. Summertime and the living is easy. That's right. <laughs> summer, yes. summer, summer, we summer are time. absolutely biased towards summer as <laughs> a couple of summer babies who love the long days, who actually kind of find a lot of joy in the sweat and hard work of things. Uh, the two of us are big advocates and fans of sunny, summery, sunshiny summer. But boy, howdy, can it be hot? It can. And, and if we don't have the right mindset around that, we end up complaining and miserying our way through things. And that's not how any of us want to be. I guess I'm making up verbs in today's episode. <laughs> so from projecting to projecting to miserying, miserying. we're verbing all over the place here. But it's good because that's what summer is all about. It's about action, right? It's about doing things. It's about being there. It's about not giving up and not running away. And with that expanded capacity for work also comes the expanded capacity for fun. 
sun, right? And that's what that beautiful part of summer is. Like literally you have more sunlight in the day to do things. And so, yes, you're working harder, but hopefully you're enjoying those summer nights, which makes me want to sing a little grease (laughs) tune for you, but I won't. Um, But thinking about that extended time means that there's more time for fun and there's more time for hard work. It can be a season where if you focus too much on one or the other, it might not be as fulfilling or as deep as you'd like. I mean, I can't stop thinking. Summer nights. Okay, yeah. If it's not summer nights, you're not doing it right. That's how you're supposed to say it, right? I love that you're talking, Shy, about this expanded capacity for fun and this expanded capacity for expansion, right? This time where we get to move forward with decisive action, right? Summertime allows us this opportunity. Now, we're going to get into describing winter, but I just want to throw the winter contrast in here, right? The winter is a time that kind of forces us to stay inside. Summer can get hot. If you live in places like Phoenix or maybe the Sahara Desert, I think the heat of those two places is probably comparable, right? You might die if you stay out for too long. But the wintertime for many of us has the opportunity, it gives us this uh, almost death-like experience when it comes to being too cold, right? There's a, a real danger to staying outside and weathering those elements. But when it comes to the summertime, you're given the opportunity, a protective space for hard work amongst the elements. And it is an opportunity for you to lean in. Now, some of us make the mistake of deciding to build a very comfortable house around us that has the most beautiful air conditioning system that never, ever, ever, ever leaves 72 and we just never leave that house. Well, then we rob ourselves of the joy of working with the season for creative expansion and expression. And a lot of folks to either shun summer or try to elongate it longer than it should be in terms of your work, in terms of your relationship, in terms of your health. And so understanding that you don't want to get lost in just hard work for hard work's sake, right? Like, I mean... I, I want to put on my professor glasses right Do it. now. Come on. And talk about the Protestant work ethic and the rise of capitalism and the way that we have time. Things. Come on. Yeah. We have time. Well, if we think about the Protestant work ethic, the, the way the Calvinist Protestants brought this forward at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, that 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 idle hands were bad, that hard work was in and of itself good, that you should shouldn't want and desire for profits, but you should want and desire to fill your time with hard work because that's what God wants for you. That's what's uh, the right way to spend your time. Well, that worked out really well because, oh, we have all these factories that need people to work in them. And so the industrial revolution and the economic system of capitalism and the Protestant work ethic all fed each other to now we get to this place where some people in our society value hard work for hard work's sake and not as a means to an end. And there isn't anything wrong with that as long as you're making that conscious decision. But if you're just sweating and sweating and sweating year after year and forcing a summer to go on, you're supposed to harvest. You're supposed to move yourself into the next season. So just wanted to talk a little bit about that relationship there because it's an interesting societal reflection of how we kind of get to this place of people maybe fabricating these summer seasons longer than they should. But you are allowed and permission to move into that autumn season next, which is all about that harvest. So if you suffer from excessive work to the point of burnout, if you suffer from maybe putting other people's priorities over your own self-care and self-needs, then you might be trying to elongate summers. Remember, if you stay in those elements for way too long, you get sunburned, your skin gets ragged, you're dry and cracked, and, and it's not a good thing for you, right? You have to get this opportunity to move into the fall, to move into the harvest. And while we are biased and partial to the summer because we are summer babies, I have to say fall is right in there with some of my favorite seasons. In fact, I actually kind of love them all because they have their own special way about them. But fall is this time of abundance. This is the time of receiving. This is the time of harvest. It's also the time where we're now moving into the downward slope in the current curve of the year. Fall for us technically happens from around September 21st to 
December 21st, which means we don't switch over into winter until almost the very end of the year. So really fall carries us through the very end of the year, giving us that momentum into the very next season. But my goodness, is it a juicy juicy fun season. It is. And it's time. It's that time for reflection. It's that time for gratitude. It's that time for harvest. It's that time for receiving. It's that time to whoo, summer. That was great. And now knowing we need to prepare for what's ahead, which is that winter season. So using this as our transition season, as a little bit of a rest and reflection season, as a mindful season, and harvesting does still require work, right? We still need to go out and pick those fruits. A lot of uh, harvesters and a lot of people leave their fruits to rot, or they they don't then care for the harvest, or you right that shows up for many in the form of self sabotage, right? You you've worked hard on all these opportunities, you've cultivated them to a certain spot, and then for whatever reason you fall through or you don't turn in the thing or you don't take the next step, right? So you've got some demons in there that are maybe preventing you from fully embracing and enjoying the harvest that you've created for yourself. But that's what this time is really all about. And it's that time for letting go of what's not going to work anymore for you because you've got to bear down in order to, to hibernate in the winter. Hello. Did you just hearken the energetic reason for Halloween? When those demons and spirits start coming out in the middle of the harvest season, it is your opportunity to not run away from them in fear, but look them in the eye. It's literally why cultures created this tradition. Because when we have this energetic opportunity to kind of do this clearing of the skeletons in the closet, if you will, you can either close the closet and pretend that the skeletons aren't there, right? Just like the person who probably built that house around themselves in the summertime to keep themselves perfectly clear. Or you can open that door. You can clean it and clear it out. We can take a look at it. We can honor it. We can find gratitude for it, right? Think about traditions like Dia de los Muertos, where we look at the people who we loved and have lost and now honor them and bring them into this present moment. This is that opportunity to do just that. And when we dance with it, not run with it or run from it, we're really able to find some beautiful things when it comes to the fall. Now, next up, we're going to go into the winter season and what it means for your life. And then we're going to cover a little bit of an overview of what these seasons mean at large when they overlay onto your life, your relationships and your health. One of our proudest business accomplishments is what we've been able to do with Squeeze In Franchising. The Squeeze In is a breakfast lunch restaurant featuring the best omelets on the planet, and it's been around for almost 50 years, and now you can have a Squeeze In in your community. We've seen how this business transformed our families, and now we are so excited to offer this to families around the country to see how this little restaurant might change their family and their community. If you're wondering how to set up your adult children for legacy and success through a small business, then the Squeeze In is an option we urge you to consider. Come find out more about Squeeze In Franchising at squeezein.com. You're enjoying this episode on Angel Phoenix Productions Podcast Network. To explore a complete lineup of quality programs and media production services, head on over to angelphoenix.com or like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Angel Phoenix Productions. All right, so we talked about that literal and metaphorical spring, summer, and fall. (laughs) Of course, that leaves one more season. It's the one that seems to have not ever ended here in our northern Nevada region (laughs) in a literal sense, Um, but we are getting those peaks of spring and that's nice. But uh, what Kay and I are actually both, we love winter as well. And the truth, truth be told, we just love the seasons. Like it's nice to see it change. It's fun to enjoy it. We understand there's lots of folks who are attracted to the temperate temperatures where there's not that seasonal change, but we were born and raised with it. And we're positive, optimistic people, which means we have what we like to lovingly call silver lining 
lining syndrome. <laughs> and the silver lining of seasons is that you get to watch them and enjoy the change and the fashion and the differences of all of them. It's something we've always loved when we heard this idea of how the seasons translate to personal growth and professional development and empowerment. We were really intrigued, especially Jim Rohn's teaching on the seasons, which you can find on YouTube. They're like 55 years old, but you can still listen to him talk about how using the seasons, just like we're talking about now, to inform your decision making in your life and your understanding of what it is that you're doing and where you're going can really help you a lot. And this winter season in particular is the one that most of us get stuck on and get stuck in sometimes because it's the darkest and it's often the hardest to move through. Winter oftentimes is a, a season that many of us resist, right? The winter comes and we are like, oh, it's getting cold and all this, it's all, the leaves are already falling and I can't believe. And like the, the complaining volume goes up. Hey, I'm not telling you that it's only you. I'm in that zone as well. It is freaking cold outside. And as much as I relate with Elsa, my goodness, the cold does bother me anyway. And it is really hard to, to bear through. And we have to, we have to add this extra layer of protection onto ourselves just in order to weather the elements outside, right? Like Shyla and I, as you know, maybe this is your first podcast, but we teach at the, at our University of Nevada, Reno here. And so twice a week, we have a walk from the parking garage over to our class building. It takes about seven or eight minutes. And I tell you what, the days when I do not properly layer up for that <laughs> seven or eight walk, I minute walk, I regret it so deeply. And Shyla has, as the older, wiser sister, Shyla has learned her heat management skills. And so she faces that winter much more gracefully than I do walking, maybe without shivering and shaking along the way. <laughs> Well, you all need to know that my personal body temperature <laughs> She's a decides very that human. it's winter 24-7. <laughs> I actually think I almost prefer winter for my body temperature-wise because it means the indoors are always heated. <laughs> like in summer, I'm suffering because everywhere is air-conditioned and so I'm even colder. So uh, I have a personal heat management system that actually Kay and Megan know quite a bit about. It has an infomercial. It has rules. It really like, does. Like, heat management is very joke. important to me. <laughs> and so obviously on the walk and during winter time to the college, I'm, I will wear double jackets sometimes. It's yeah. like, I don't even have one jacket. You have two. And I'm like, and I'm keeping both. Thank you very much. Uh, but right. It's all about that preparation and know it. Like I know my personal body winter mode. And so I, I, come to a any season, metaphorical or literal, ready for that, right? I've got my summer blankets and summer slippers. I've got my winter jackets to wear outside and implementing that heat management system all the time because that's personal for me. But when we talk about winters in our life, these are those dark times, right? And if we don't prepare, if we haven't put anything into our hibernation stores, if we haven't um, maybe made some connections or put money away, the, the, these can be really hard seasons. And I, I want you to know that uh, we're telling you this from a non-conceptual place. There was an actual winter in 2013, 2014, where my daughter, my third daughter was born in October. We were looking down the barrel of financials and within the business, Kay had just gotten married and moved to San Diego. And there was this literal, we will not make it through this winter and its payrolls if there are, if we don't do something drastic. And so in order to make it through that winter, because we had not planned ahead through the summer and through the harvest, mom and dad had to foreclose on their house and move into Chad and I's house and sleep with us for eight weeks in our living room with the newborn and two three-year-old twins in order to survive that winter. So the real pain of not preparing for that financial winter, which wasn't news to us, gang. Like we'd been in the restaurant business for 10 years. We knew that we made a lot of money in the summer and in the fall and that we were supposed to save some of that money in the winter. So we're not telling you anything you don't know, but like, come on, raise your hand if you've also done that. You haven't prepared for something that you knew you should have prepared for, right? <laughs> That's those winter seasons in our life. And, and when we are prepared for them, we weather them a whole lot better. Now, winter doesn't only happen and the seasons don't only happen on these large macro months long, years long, lifelong scales. Seasons can literally happen in the midst of a day, in the midst of an hour, in the midst of a single meeting. What I imagine when I imagine winter is the 
thick of battle, right? This is the place where things are toughest, right? This is the idea that you are out there and you are fighting for your life. Now, hopefully you are prepared warrior like Shyla is in the winter time, bringing her extra jackets to go against the weather, but maybe you are facing a literal threat and you have to bring your sword and your shield. But if you showed up to that battle unprepared, you would be shocked at how quickly you would fall, right? Similarly, if you were to go outside into a blizzard with a, naked, you would be shocked at how quickly you you would get frostbitten. And so understanding that these seasons can happen so quickly, right? You can find yourself in the heat of an of an a back and forth in a meeting that feels like an argument, right? Let's talk about this as the heat of battle, right? And then after that, you come to a resolution and it feels really good. And okay, now we're in the spring and we're getting to talk about new beginnings with this person. Oh, that feels really good. Now we're, we're through this argument. Now we're talking about the new beginnings. And now we're all celebrating and we're laughing together about the old times that have happened. We're in the summer. Now we're like, okay, well, we we talked about the new beginnings, but let's actually put some legs to this plan. Let's put some bones underneath the structure. Let's see what's going to happen. And then by the end of the meeting, we have an abundant agreement. So that something, somebody says yes, right? There's a breakthrough in the momentum that allows there to now be work on the other side of that encounter. Now, all of that just happened within an hour. So seasons can expand and contract and happen. And when we're aware of them happening, we can really utilize them to, uh, to, do our best inside the season to honor it and don't show up naked to the blizzard. <laughs> well, I want to expand on a little bit of what you just said there. And I, th I think you brought forward some really good points and understanding that like using this analogy of the heat of the battle for the cold of the winter, like just kind of writing that for a second here, because the heat of a battle, like I'm going to go to have that hard conversation with somebody, right? If we're using this relationship example, it doesn't feel hot. It feels ice cold, right? Like that is a cold conversation to have. That is a cold place to be. And so it is the heat of the battle, but it's typically very cold. And that's what we associate with winter. And furthermore, if we want to extend this idea of, you know, it, the winter is the warrior season. Yes, the warrior shows up to that battle ready to go and with their shield and their sword and their armor on and their, and their training behind them. But what we also know is that for 23 out of 24 hours a day, that warrior has to be disciplined and waiting for that battle, has to be preparing for that battle, has to be rested and recharged for that battle. And so winter is for the warrior, but warriors are pretty rarely in battle. Most often they're in training, they're in discipline mode, they're in rest mode, they're in gathering and hibernation mode and protection mode, right? Like that's that's what a warrior's day most often looks looks like so that they can be ready for that cold battle or that heat of the battle, right? Going into that and then being able to allow those other personalities and seasons to sprout and to come forward. But we've got to be protective in that cold and that ice. And that's what a warrior does most of the time. And that's what winter does for us. Any winter season is a chance for you to rest, to recharge, to reflect, and to refine anything that you want to bring forward in your new spring coming up. Right. So it's this season to, to protect your energy fiercely, to use it fiercely when it is time and to build your care around yourself so that those new beginnings can sprout forward in the beautiful season of spring and around and around and around it goes until we come to the end of our life which is a season of itself nestled in a larger system. And it's so beautiful to be a part of it. And thank you all for deciding to join us for our conversation on the energy of seasons here today. We encourage you to embrace the wisdom of nature, to utilize the power of the rhythms in your life to see and reflect on where you can find seasons in your life and maybe be more of a co-creator as to how they're showing up and how prepared you are for them. But however you treat this content, we're glad that you joined us here today on the Infinite Energy Podcast. We hope that if you like this episode, you'll share it with others, you'll subscribe, you'll like it, and you'll be part of our growing family that we're so proud of. And as always, this episode comes at you with so much love from your sisters, Kay and Shai. This podcast was a production of Angel Phoenix Productions. 
Explore more episodes of this show or other great shows on the Angel Phoenix Podcast Network by visiting angelphoenix.com. The views expressed in this show do not necessarily represent those of Angel Phoenix Productions or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners.